We are gathered here today under the watchful gaze of the Fury to ascertain the guilt of two souls in a trial by combat. Petitioner... Sir Grino, for the benefit of all here present, I would ask you to repeat the charges which you have leveled against this man and this woman. I, Sir Grino de Zemile, brother of the Heaven's Ward, did bear witness to these two foreigners consorting with heretics. Let the accused step forward. Alfino Leveya, Tataru Taru, you have heard the charges leveled against you. Will you take up arms to refute Sir Grino's claim, and thereby prove your innocence in the eyes of gods and men? I, Alphino Levier, am innocent of this charge, and claim my right to trial by combat. I, Tataru Taru, am innocent of this charge. But I am no warrior and cannot fight. So, I claim the right to name a champion. To the old and the infirm, the young and the weak, this right we allow. Very well. Who will stand for this woman? Just as I was beginning to doubt the efficacy of the Ishgardian justice system. Come, my friend. Let us put an end to this mama's farce. Render unto us your judgment. Raise up the righteous and cast down the wicked.
have my pride. you now.
Your Eminence, it is my honor to present to you the Warrior of Light. I have heard the tales of your many grand endeavors. The Lord Commander has also been most effusive in his praise. I am Thorin the Seventh, Archbishop of the Ishgardian Orthodox Church, and I bade you come here that I might offer my personal apologies. You will forgive me for not calling upon you as courtesy would dictate, but as you can see, my more sprightly days are long behind me. But your companions were wrongly accused of heresy and subjected to gross indignities. Yes, Your Eminence. Regrettably, it would appear that we of the Heaven's Ward were in receipt of erroneous information. Sir Grino has ever been headstrong. He pressed charges before the truth had been ascertained, for which I most sincerely apologize. An unfortunate misunderstanding born of an earnest desire to serve Ishgard, but one which should never have occurred. For who could doubt the character of those who bested Shiva and drove the Horde from the steps of faith? Not I, that much is certain. That will be all, Sir Zephyrin. I would speak with our guest in private. Your Eminence? As you wish, Your Eminence. That will be all for today. Privacy is a luxury rarely afforded one in my position. Now tell me, young lady, what do you know of the Asians? Much and more, I shouldn't wonder, being the bringer of light. You should know that I myself have met with them, have entertained them as guests, even. Those harbingers of chaos and strife offered us power that we might continue our war against the dragons. I have no intention of aiding their cause, of course, nor less of being their puppet. Yet, were I to refuse them outright, I should learn naught of their true objectives and remain powerless to stop them. Thus have I hearkened to their words with interest and paid lip service to their beliefs biding my time and preparing for the inevitable conflict. And why do I tell you this? Because there is naught in this world they fear more than the power of the Warrior of Light. If we are to rid ourselves of these vile interlopers, we must need to work together. With our combined strength, I have faith that we can wrest Eorzea from their grasp and pave the way for a lasting peace. Think on it.
There you are. I confess, I was more than a little concerned when I learned that you had been summoned to the vault. What did they want with you? Well, well. A formal apology and an admonishment of those responsible. I see my fears were wholly misplaced. By the gods! The Archbishop freely admits to consorting with Asians. So, their ambitions extend to Ishgard as well. We will have new primals to contend with ere long, of that you may be certain. Tis but a matter of time. Yet shorn of the support of our missing allies, what can we realistically hope to achieve? <gasps> In the midst of all the excitement, I completely forgot to tell you. When I was asking around about the Scions, I heard the most awful rumor. General Raubun is to be executed for crimes against the Sultanate! If the Flame General dies, we will lose a staunch ally, and the one man capable of holding the Sultana's assassins to account. Lord Orshifon was wise to counsel restraint, but this business will brook no delay. We cannot permit this execution to take place. We must save Raubarn. Friends, it is good to see you safe and well. I will admit I had not counted on you seeking, let alone finding refuge within the Holy See, but full glad was I to learn that you had. Thankfully, we had allies there who took us under their wing, and theirs was not the only aid we receive, I suspect. When we fled Uldar, we fully expected to become wanted men, known to all and hounded at every turn. Yet that did not come to pass. On the contrary, it would seem the charges against us have not been made public. Might we have you to thank for that, Admiral? Sharp as ever, Master Elfino. On Marshal Terrapin's urging, the Elder Seed Seer and I demanded that the Syndicate suppress news of the Scion's alleged crimes until such time as irrefutable evidence could be found. Our argument was simple. Lacking proof to accuse the saviors of the realm of so unlikely a crime would have the people up in arms. In their wisdom, the Syndicate agreed, as you yourself have seen. There is something you should know. Some few days prior to the banquet, the Elder Seedseer and I were summoned for a private audience with the Sultana. There, she revealed her intent to announce her abdication, that she might pave the way for the establishment of an Uldan Republic. What? But such an announcement would have plunged the entire nation into chaos. She was well aware of that. It was for fear of what might ensue that she summoned us. Her Grace wanted the Elder Seed Seer and I to lend Raubarn a helping hand, you see? to aid him in preserving the peace during the transition. So, having somehow caught wind of her plan, Lollarito and Teleji plotted the Sultana's assassination, 
in the hope of maintaining the constitutional status quo. But they must have known that her death would sow as much chaos as her abdication. Chaos from which Telegi alone might feasibly stand to profit. Surely Lollorito would never knowingly... Ah, could it be? I dare not hope. The Uldan authorities have yet to announce the Sultana's passing. To allay any suspicion that may arise from Her Grace's absence, they have issued a statement to the effect that she is presently convalescing from illness. Mayhap they're waiting for a fitting moment to break the news. Or mayhap they know of some other reason to delay. Something else has been bothering me, Admiral. I was dismayed to learn that General Raoban is to be executed. Yet upon hearing the news, I could not help but wonder why he had been kept alive for so long. Pray mistake not my meaning. I am, of course, overjoyed that our friend still draws breath, and that he might yet be saved. But if his enemies truly wished to eliminate him, they could have done so immediately. I see no reason for this delay. Aye, you've struck upon an important point, Master Alphano. Following his capture, Raoban had been held in the Marasaja pit within Uldar. In recent days, however, he has reportedly been moved to an unknown location. Queerly, it was not the Brass Blades who spirited him away either, but a band of soldiers decked in blue. The Crystal Brave. Aye. If I read the winds aright, the arrangement between Lord Lollorito and the Braves has come under strain. At any rate, if we're to rescue Raoban, we'll have to find him first. And you'll be glad to hear that I have already entrusted the task to those best able to see it done. Our friends of Doma.